a legendary romanticist in Korean literature community. Baek Seok was active during the Japanese occupation. He was handsome and tall for the time, standing at a height of 185 centimeters. With his talents and with his dashing looks, he was certainly admired by many women at the time. Some even say people swooned when he walked by on the street. His love life was just as fantastic as well. The most famous of his love interest being the one with the girl named Kim Young Han. In the year of 1936, Baek Sok was working as an English teacher at a high school. On the night out, he stumbled across the kiss and Kim and fell in love at the first sight. Now, you may be wondering what Kisang is. They were performers who danced, sang, and played musical instruments. They would entertain the Yangban, who were the gentry of old Korea. They were part of the lower social class, and strictly Confucian terms were regarded negatively. But they were nevertheless highly educated, and because of their skills in composing poetry and a painting, they were considered cultured. Anyways, the romanticist poet put it next to him and says, From this day on, you're mine. Until death to us apart, there's no parting for us. Kim and Bag soon became lovers. They gave her the nickname Jaya, a character from the works of Tang Dynasty poet. Ye back. Even though they were getting along all fine and dandy, the peace couldn't last forever. Beck was very high in social classes. He was an uh, intellectual and an amazing poet as well. He was also a teacher in one of the best high schools at the time. Compared to him, Jaya was part of Gisang, a considerably less well-regarded class. No one, and no one, were taken kindly to them being together. His parents certainly didn't. They forced Beck to marry another woman. Beck, however, wasn't the one to back down easily. He ran off at the first night of his marriage and goes to Jaya and said, Let's run off to Manchuria with me. We'll live together there. But Jaya refuses, concerned that she'll be the Nissan's of his future success. Beck lives anyways, expecting her to come along sooner or later. He spends his time in Manchuria alone. One of the poems he wrote became one of the most famous romanticist poems in Korea. Me, Natasha, and a white donkey, the one he wrote in remembrance. Of Jaya. Another notable poem from the period is There is a white wind wall with Beck's desolate mindscape showing through the riddles of words and sentences. He didn't know it then, of course, that the time he made the offer to go to Manchuria with Jaya would be the last time Beck would see her. After the liberation in 1945, Beck returned to Hamhung to find Jaya. Jaya, however, had already left Seoul. And with the separation between North and South, he would never get the chance to meet her again. Beck never managed to escape the North and died alone in 1996, yearning to return to his home. That yearning shows up well in the poem Dam Shiniju Yudong Pak Meanwhile, Jaya, who remained in South Korea, went on to found one of Korea's best high-class restaurants, accumulating an enormous amount of wealth. Surprisingly, instead of keeping all the wealth, she donated all the way to a monk by the name of Bopcheon on her death. The temple Gilsangsa is former restaurant. 
For those wondering, the whale sums up to 100 billion won in today's money, which is about 9 billion US dollars. Having missed back for most of her life, dying in 1999 from lung cancer, she was asked a question by a reporter. He asked if she felt any regrets or doubts donating such a wealth away. Not even a 100 billion won can amount. To a single sentence in his poems, would I die, spread my ashes at Gilson's side, on a snowy day, preferably? Perhaps she wanted to return to his lover on a snowy day, just like the one in me, Natasha and White Donkey. Their love was more beautiful than anyone else. Yet, in the face of the occupation and separation, there could be little done against such brutal reality. Longing goes through the days when the leaves turn red on the cleanly swept slope road, on the night when the snow falls softly on the ground like a carpet, backs clear and innocent love reaches out to me and wrings my heart. Him still waiting for the love of his life to return on a white donkey, crying gently.